It is a shift in the process of determining who can be a U.S. citizen. The latest move on immigration by the Trump administration at first sparked confusion and outrage yesterday. The rule is smaller in scope than initially thought, but still says that some children born to Americans living abroad, working for the U.S. military, or as diplomats will no longer automatically be U.S. citizens. We want to take time now to clarify this move and look at the administration's broader strategy on immigration with Ken Cuccinelli. He is the acting director of the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, and he joins me now, and thank you for being Judy, here at the News Hour. You. So let's, a lot of changes, they've been coming fast and furious in the, in the field of immigration, and as we've been listening to Amna uh, in, in citizenship and immigration, but what I want to ask you about this new policy, it's just, uh, we've just learned about it this week, it ends automatic citizenship for... Nope. Okay, nope. it ends automatic citizenship. May, no, it doesn't. I just state it, and you then may, you can it you can correct it if <laughs> if you disagree. But ends automatic citizenship for some children born to to U.S. citizens who are stationed abroad, either working for the U.S. government as diplomats or the military. Why yeah, this move? That, well, first of all, uh, the the statement about who becomes a, a citizen at, at birth is not correct. All the same people still become citizens at birth. Um, this is, and for your viewers, this is all about people outside the United States. Some people have said, oh, this is birthright citizenship, it's other things. It has nothing to do with being born in the U.S. It's for people who are born outside the United States who are not U.S. citizens when they are born. And already, but that was true before or after. Citizen. No, doesn't that not necessarily, not necessarily. And the only thing that has changed here is the forms they have to fill out, the process they have to go through to get that child to be a U.S. citizen. That is it. We didn't change a single person who would be, who would or could become a U.S. But citizen why before do, or after. Excuse me for interrupting. That's an excellent why question. Do this? Because the Department of State obviously also issues travel documents. We issue uh, various visas and other documents. And USCIS, the agency I lead, was not conforming to the law. And there's a very specific thing that, that was wrong. Let me finish, please. Uh, so somebody could go through the process we have now and show up to get a passport to travel home for their child, and they wouldn't get a passport. The State Department wouldn't recognize them as a citizen because what we were doing didn't didn't comply with the law. So we've brought ourselves in compliance with the law but, and all the same people can still become citizens. But the bottom line is that it makes it somewhat more difficult no. to become nope. a citizen. I, I checked this earlier today. It doesn't even take longer. There's still paperwork, but it's different paperwork. So you're saying this has all been a lot of fuss over nothing? Yes, and we, we obviously could have communicated this a lot better, but it it, it, is, a, it is almost nothing. It affects in paperwork only, about 20 to 25 people a year. And we, we came to that number by looking back through how many people fell in these categories in previous years. All right, well, we appreciate having that clarification. Well, I appreciate you letting me clarify you. it. And I do want to ask you about some other changes, sure. though. And just in the last few days, the administration has changed the policy, as we understand it, around how immigrants with dire health conditions are treated. Previously, they were granted what's called medical deferred action, which is a special status that allows them to remain in the country legally, receive Medicaid if necessary, and work while they get medical treatment. But now, we are told tens of thousands of people who have serious health conditions, whether cancer, cystic fibrosis, are subject to being to losing their ability to stay here. Right, and and we have uh, a B visa, a tourist visa, which can also be used for medical treatment for people who are here. No one gets deferred action who's here legally. That is only for people who are not here legally, and it is just Correct. as it says. They're here it as undocumented. Right, they're illegally here, and so ICE is the enforcing agency. And this isn't just about medical. This is about USCIS, a non-enforcement agency. We're not a law enforcement agency. Uh, some years ago started issuing deferences, which we don't, which isn't appropriate for us. 
that's left for ICE to do, and it only happens once people are removable from the country. But, but you're asking, let me just point out, you're asking people who are in this situation with a very sick family member to turn to an enforcement agency to let them know that they are here in an undocumented status. And let me just bring it to a personal level. We saw the story of a mother from Honduras. She has a 16-year-old son with cystic fibrosis. He's being treated in Boston. His older sister has already died of cystic fibrosis. His mother says if he can't continue this treatment, he will die. So what's the reason for squeezing people in, in these circumstances? Well, obviously, this family isn't targeted, Judy. What was going on before and started some time ago and has now raised expectations, it's raised yours, it's raised others, is was not consistent with the law. It was a, a law that says on a case-by-case -case basis, this can be granted, was granted across the board. So now it will be granted on a case-by-case -case basis. And humanitarian basis is a basis to grant these sorts of relief. So it can still be granted to that sort of, the family in your example. But, but let's remember, these people also can get B visas and, and come here legally to do all of these But things. just quickly, again, it's making it harder for them to do that. I do want to ask you about Only another... in the sense that they actually have to now go do something. Another new rule enacted under your agency, the so-called public charge rule, yes. under which the government will deny green cards to legal U.S. residents and visa holders currently using or expected to use government benefits like food stamps, Medicaid, housing assistance. My question is, how does this comport with America's long history of welcoming? I mean, you go back to huddled masses yearning to be free. Are you now saying America doesn't want people who, who need any help? You know, that's an excellent question, Judy. Um, under federal law, all the way back to 1882, over almost 140 years, we have required people coming to this country to meet these sorts of standards, uh, to be self-sufficient. And American people want immigrants who are self-sufficient, and that means that won't go on these sorts of welfare programs. And it isn't all welfare programs, and even Medicaid is only for adults. It isn't for people under 21 and so forth. But that is a long-standing requirement of American law, and it's a core value, self-sufficient. But, but is it a core value it that is. goes back to the founding of, of this It country? goes back to 1645 in Massachusetts. But people were welcomed into this country yes. who were, again, your huddled masses yearning to be free. People came to this country with nothing and, at all. And, and tens and of thousands turned, of them, and made tens something. of thousands of them were turned back as expected to be public charges. And that is a, that, that has long been part of the law. The law we passed this rule for was implemented on a strong bipartisan basis in 1996 and signed by Bill Clinton. But the point of it appears to be to squeeze the definition of who can be an American. Is that, is that what you and the administration are trying to do? My question is, you're clearly trying to make it harder to become a U.S. citizen. For people you, who can't support themselves in America, and who would go on welfare in the future. And why are they not welcome? Uh, in, for the same reasons you referred to the American tradition, and this is straight out of the American tradition, both legally and historically. We, when we, this is the most generous and welcoming nation in the history of the world when it comes Even to immigrants. Even with this new definition. And we have always expected people to stand on their own two feet and to be self-sufficient. And to, we are not the welfare provider for the world. And, and this is just continuing that tradition. But again, and, and I forgive me if I'm repeating myself, in the beginning, this was a country that welcomed people of all circumstances, the poorest people on the planet were With welcome to come to this poor country people can and still to come make to something this country. of themselves. But the, and, and when you look at, so we have focused on the welfare benefits in our short discussion here. It's one factor among many, and it is always only one factor among many. So let's take a truly but, impoverished folks who, who might who have used welfare benefits up to the time they're considered for that green card. Let me, please let me just finish. But during that time, they've also gotten a, a plumbing certification. They have a job. They've dem those are other factors. They've gotten education they didn't have before. All of those can offset the use of welfare benefits. The but point is that they can stand on their own in the future as they live here 
long term with us as fellow Americans. Are you saying the, the ideal portrait of an American is different from what it was in no, the, at the very beginning question. of this country? It, you know, it has been, uh, it, well, we'll take, you know, I'm from Virginia, the beginning is 1607. I assume we're a little different from then, but for 140 years, the American people have strongly supported and had in law, and we do today, the requirement that the people we welcome here will stand on their own and be self-sufficient. Self-sufficiency is one of those core values that makes America unique, and we expect it to continue. And I'm sure you know many Americans see that differently. They, I understand they still that. see this country I as a place that. with open arms and I do closed too. ones. And I do too. And this isn't closing our arms, but it is expecting people to carry their own weight and not yeah. expecting to come here and for us to carry them as fellow Americans or, or legal permanent residents, which is what a green card is. Ken Cuccinelli, Acting Director of the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. Judy, Thank good you. to be with you.